Well, good morning, everyone, and, and welcome to the Chamber's webinar, uh, proudly hosted by Invest Cayman. Um, I'm Will Panam with the Chamber of Commerce, and just wanted to give you a little bit of background about Invest Cayman. It's, it's a new investment promotion agency for the Cayman Islands. And it's responsible for attracting and facilitating foreign direct investment. Today's webinar will provide you with some information about the, the new agency and with information about the uh, ability to ask any questions that you may have about the new agency. I'm pleased to say that Invest Cayman joined the chamber in uh, a few months ago. So thank you, Jane. And we want to work closely with uh, her agency and sharing the message about how our members can engage with Invest Cayman as also the, the purpose of it. So a little bit about Jane herself. She's a director of Invest Cayman. She's worked with the Department of Tourism previously as a deputy director for international marketing and promotion. And previous to that, she was the executive director for the Cayman Islands Tourism Association. So I've known Jane for many years. She's a graduate of Leadership Cayman, which very proud of. Actually the second class, so well done. And so I'd like to turn it over to Jane, where she'll share some information about this exciting new agency that the government has created. So over to you, Jane. Thank you so much, Will. And it is great to be a member of the chamber because it's really important when you see through uh, my presentation, how important it is that the Invest Cayman works with our local stakeholders and the business owners that are all members of the chamber. So I'm going to share my screen and um, go through a little presentation. And if I haven't addressed any of your questions, then we can do so afterwards. Great, so Invest Cayman. We are, as Will said, the investment promotion agency of the Cayman Islands. And you might want to know what that is. And as Will also noted, we are responsible for attracting and facilitating foreign direct investment, that's known as FDI, to the Cayman Islands. And the role of an IPA actually is centralizing um, foreign investment promotions and facilitation activities, information, decimation, policy advocacy. And so, we help present a coherent impression of the Cayman Islands' attractiveness to investment. So our vision is that we would like to be a global leader in creative and innovative investments that act as a catalyst for economic and social transformation in the Cayman Islands. So what that means is we need to make a difference with the investments that we are going after that make a difference to your life, the way you do business, the way you live in the Cayman Islands. So our mission is in the pursuit of that creative, innovative and sustainable investment. Our mission is to attract, facilitate and retain partnerships. And that is working with civil engagement, local stakeholders and making sure that we make the right connections for our investors. So why Invest Cayman? A lot of people want to know, so why has this been created? We need to make sure that people realize that Cayman is a destination with investment opportunities and FDI, that foreign direct investment, investment opportunities. We are to assist individuals or organizations in bringing their business or their lives to the Cayman Islands. We're going to do some product and market development and research, and we're going to work with as many other associations and entities, including government entities, to pull together investment um, data, which is really important. We will also be promoting domestic investment. It's not just all FDI. We have some incredible opportunities for investment on island. We want to help shape some of the related government policies that further trade and investment in the Cayman Islands. Many of you know that times change. 
the pandemic, pandem pandemic has made a lot of changes to how we do business in the last two years. So maybe there's, this is a good time to evaluate some of the legislation and, and keep it current to help investment move forward. And then we are to help facilitate that development of industries or new businesses so that we can create employment opportunities, always trying to increase exports and reduce imports. And the most important is it has to be beneficial to our economy. So the things that we most value right now is that transformation of social and economic diversification. So we have to be results driven. We need to make sure that we are um, tracking that data and working on um, some organizational strategy so we can focus on the outcomes and the achievements. We need to be partner centric. We have got to work together. We have to know what your needs are where your opportunities for investment are and how we can connect those to investors. So therefore we also have to be customer centric. We have to work with that customer, with that investor that would like to bring that business to the island that will help or help join your business by through investment or would like to just come to the Cayman Islands and live here. And we need to be that change agent for sustainable businesses. So we do have a three year plan. Actually, it's a two and a half year plan since I started July 1st. So we've come a long way in a short period, but through the marketing and education of that three year plan, of course, we want to identify our target audience, both internal and external. We want to continue developing that marketing plan, both local and international for the destination awareness as an investment destination. And we also want to make sure we identify which channels are the best channels for us to make that delivery through and implement that. We need to make sure we're integrated with the Cayman Islands government. Of course, we have a five-year actually recruit and hire and operationalize plan. And so uh, depending on budget and um, how far along we are in our plan, allows us to recruit and build a team over the next five years. We need to align our goals and plans with other departments in the, in the Cayman Islands government so that when they need investment, we are working together and define those department milestones for ourselves so that we know when we've reached these milestones that we can talk about them, share them and make sure you're aware of them. Therefore, we really need to establish some sort of a reporting cadence using our already existing legacy units that are around both government and non-governmental and um, a report on a regular basis, not only outwards towards you and outwards towards investors so they understand the opportunities that are here, but also internally to the Cayman Islands government. And then we need to build our CRM. We need to review our existing and needed data. We need to work on that. Where do we get it from? Do we need extra tools to gain, gain the information that we want? So we need to um, have that digital strategy and sharing information and then build out that customer CRM globally, build that audience of investors and the types of investment they want to do and the opportunities that they bring to the Cayman Islands so we can marry that opportunity locally to the investor that's looking for the opportunity to come to the Cayman Islands. So our next steps, bearing in mind July 1st, so we're a new IPA, we're a new agency in the government. So we're doing our research and development, our marketing and engagement, and then coming up with our service blueprint. And I'll go into each one of these in a little more detail. So let's start with research and development. We need to determine, as I noted earlier, those investment needs and opportunities. We want to make sure that these investments that come to the Cayman Islands are also helping us with economic growth. And that will happen through job creation and skills development, bringing new entities to the Cayman Islands that give us opportunities to get new jobs and learn new skills. And of course, that improves our market competitiveness. 
We want to attract, as I mentioned, that right invest investment persona. We want that sustainable impact investment. You know already that we are number one in the world and with our financial services and hedge funds. We're doing extremely well with our real estate market. And our tourism is robust before the pandemic. And I have no doubt it will come back just as strong, if not stronger. So there are other areas that we need to develop. So we also, during that search for developing those industries that we can share with investors, we are also developing our own services. And that's, being, that's navigating that right now. And, and as we grow, those services will change. But for sure, we need to have destination awareness that we are not um, just a tourism and a financial destination, but an opportunity for investment. We need to do that investor facilitation where we help the investor come to the Cayman Islands and connect them with the right people. We need to do marketing development and promotion of domestic investment as well, and government policy shaping and develop those industries. So FDI, that foreign direct investment, is widely recognized as a key mechanism for countries to achieve SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal from the United Nations 8. And what that is promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. And most IPAs around the globe really strive for this SDG 8, and so will we. So now going into marketing and engagement, we need to develop those internal processes. We talked about data, 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 data. It is critical for us, both directly and indirectly through other than government sources. We have some great government sources that collect data, but we also need the data from um, other areas as well. We need data on employment. We need data on investments. We need data on FDI impact, on sustainable projects, on infrastructure products. So we're going to be really trying to determine how we can pull all this together so it's in one place with Invest Cayman. Now, we also need to discover what's happening right now. What are the pain points for an investor and also for our um, local stakeholders here in the Cayman Islands when working with investors? And what are our needs? So, once we find out more of those, we can help shape related government policy that would really further trade and investment into the Cayman Islands. We need to create those activations and activity and drive business to each of the sectors or the different industries. And we're also going to make sure that that customer journey touch points along the way are made. And I'll talk more about that. And then we're going to develop that service blueprint where not only do we establish the roles and responsibilities of Invest Cayman as an IPA with government and private sector, but also the roles and responsibilities um, of each of our local stakeholders so that we really have a nice integrated network that we can share with an investor. We're going to conduct those investor or investment activations through local engagements and special events. We know that special events in the Cayman Islands draw a high net worth individual to the Cayman Islands. It's very good for our tourism and hospitality, but it's an excellent way for us to bring investors here and show them what we have to offer, the world-class services we have in the Cayman Islands and who we are. Again, talking about accurate data, it's essential for identifying the policies and practices that need to be improved, staying in line with that SDG 8 and connecting investors and investors to local enterprises and projects. This also must include small and medium enterprises and even those that are economically disadvantaged groups. This is where investment can really help. We need to support the government to promote business practices and align investors with approved projects and then facilitate that customer on their journey by offering high standard of quality service and most important, timeliness of delivery. And if that's an area that we can improve in, then that's what we need to do. 
So you might wonder what kind of uh, industries we have. As I talked earlier, the financial, the tourism, the real estate sales and development is doing very, very well. Um, according to Acquisition International, right now, the top investments are artificial intelligence, virtual reality, renewable energy, cybersecurity, transportation or transport, and that is due to COVID-19 and the huge loss uh, that they have in that industry. So they need investment to bring them back up. And cloud computing. These are all areas of investment we can do here in the Cayman Islands, because one of the things we lack is real estate, as in land, to build large factories or anything like that. So we need to go after the other kind of investments that can help. So I need to reach out to that customer. And, um, and here we'll give you an idea of, of, the, of the connection that Invest Cayman will have with an investor throughout their journey. We'll have that initial engagement through that um, special event or opportunity that we have to connect with them, visiting trade shows, um, referrals from other investors. And we'll have that initial engagement and talk to them about the Cayman Islands. What do they need for their business? What are the benefits of relocating? Who should they meet with? And we make that connection. Then we go ahead and connect them once we've identified the best route for onboarding and relocation with all of the areas that they need to connect to it. So for instance, we know along the way they're gonna to have to connect with work, um, DCI with the CBC and um, may have a business license and maybe they're interested in being in, in an economic zone like Cayman Enterprise City or Tech Cayman. And of course, know the regulations to meet with SEMA. Then we help them with the relocation process. We'll assist them in their relocation, help them make sure they have the right connections for their uh, inception to completion and bring in their business here. Then the investor arrives on island. We want to onboard them and make any further connections that are needed and assist them in that operating and startup of their business or if they're moving to the Cayman Islands to live, to get them out and introduce them. And most importantly is the aftercare. We must stay in touch regularly and touch, have touch points with our investors because we know that that always leads to future potential investments and also um, other investors of, of, of their, that they know that we might be able to introduce and also bring to the Cayman Islands. So I wanted to share with you um, what we fondly call EBDI, which is the Enhanced Business Development Initiative that Invest Cayman is currently doing. So it is our goal, of course, to attract and retain qualified investors. And we do that through some activations where we bring investors together somehow, whether it's through invitation only, special events, strategic events in the Cayman Islands, which is something that um, Invest Cayman and our ministry, the Ministry of Investment, Innovation and Social Development are working on so that we can bring that high worth net individual to the Cayman Islands and we can talk with them, we can activate with them. So how does that benefit the investor? It really helps them to meet expert advisors in the areas of business that they need. We are able to show them and introduce them to all the valuable resources on island. And we're able to have that strategic connection for them that they need. And especially we are looking for sustainable investment. So we're looking for companies that have ESG close to their heart, that are a part of their mantra, and make sure that those are the kind of businesses that we are bringing to the Cayman Islands. So what does an EBDI activation look like? Well, we would like to bring them to the Cayman Islands for anywhere between four to seven days. We'll host an investor day and invite stakeholders um, to interact with our investors. So that way we have stakeholder partner and participation. They'll get to meet with these partners and the partners will be able to sponsor some events or parts of the program along the way. 
this allows us to show the best of class in Cayman with our local infrastructure and services. Where there's always room for improvement, we are an incredible country, even at this stage. So this allows um, the investor and for us to work with a broad range of qualified vendors and services so we, they can experience that. And of course, it helps build our brand awareness. Um, we'll you know, have online presence and social media, customer interaction and engagement, and hopefully that will lead to the development of industries and other ventures and enterprises in the Cayman Islands. So we have some key performance indicators that we've set up. And of course, these will change year after year or even more as we grow Invest Cayman. We want to be able to track that direct and indirect investment and all the deals that they have in each industry. So we can see what industries are rising and which industries are popular and where the most money is being invested. We would like to host or sponsor at least one annual investor conference per year. We already have some great conferences that are being put on by different industries in the Cayman Islands. Maybe Invest Cayman becomes a part of those, or we can actually have them become a part of a larger event that Invest Cayman does and bring um, investors to the Cayman Islands. We'd like to track any investment directly through Invest Cayman of people who have purchased 2.5 million or above real estate and any investor that maybe visits once but comes back within at least 18 months to visit us again because there's interest. It has been shown or the trend is that when you connect with an investor, it takes about four years for them to make that decision to move to a new jurisdiction. We'd like to track the number of EBDI activations we have per year. And also we like to track that committed future investments. Again, talking about the four years, we might talk to an investor today that's, Jane, I'm very interested. And then about three or four years later, we track that committed future investment and see if it becomes a reality. And very important, we need to grow our CRM. We need to grow those relationships, those relationships with you as a business owner and with investors. So I wanted you to meet our team. I am the director as uh, Will introduced and thank you so much, Will, that's great. Um, I also wanted to introduce you to uh, my interim deputy director, Melinda Montemayor. Um, Melinda has actually been um, uh, in the civil service for quite a while and has 20 years of experience, but she also was um, in the ministry, former Ministry of Commerce, Planning and Infrastructure and helped with ministerial strategy, operations, policy development. So it's been excellent to have her on the team to help us move Invest Cayman forward. And then Melanie McPhil, she comes to us uh, being very involved in our community and has been with uh, government for quite some time and brings, and she was with the former Department of Commerce and Investment actually um, when Invest Cayman first started some time ago, she was involved. So we bring that that uh, great history with us and her marketing and events experience as well. So I want to end with uh, a statement that the Honorable Minister Andre Ebank said, and I really, I really think this hits home. We are a global community of people who work hard, think big and focus on progress. So we want to attract people and we want people to succeed and we want to support ambition and attract and nurture talent and welcome people with vision. And I think that that is, uh, it's brilliant because that is exactly what we need to do in the Cayman Islands. So with that, I thank you very much. And um, I'll, I'll uh, share this information for contact. You can always go on our website at investcayman.gov.ky. And um, it would be great if you signed up for our newsletter. It's at the bottom of uh, the page. And you can reach out to me directly anytime at jane.scaletta at gov.ky. All right. Well, thank you, Jane, for your presentation. Um, now what I'd like to do is to kind of turn it over to the audience to see if anybody has any questions. 
I guess I'll just begin just by asking you, in in your view, since it's the agency has just started up, um, what what um, role do you see the agency playing with connecting to people in in the chamber membership who want to provide services to the agency to assist you in, in what you're trying to achieve? So um, one of the key things for um, an IPA, Will, is our website, because that's how an investor might actually reach out to us. Even if we have a personal connection, they're going to check our website. We do have currently under the resources page um, links to major associations, including the chamber, um, that directly go to those associations so they can learn more. I anticipate that we'll flesh out each of um, the types of industries that we have. And currently all it is is a list of industries. And my goal is that we flesh out each of the industries. We have case studies under the industry so that an investor can look and see, oh, I see that this has happened before in the Cayman Islands and this is something I'm interested in. Um, and then under there, um, probably um, have a list of connections. Now, one of the things that, that we have to be careful is not just connecting to every person that wants to sign up. It, it has to be investor related. And it's possible that the best way to do that is through, for instance, if to get a chamber member to be connected to, they need to go through the link that goes to the chamber. Mm -hmm. But maybe what we can do is have, um, and we do have it on the website if you want to ask a question, is, and we are getting these where um, investors are reaching out and going, uh, Jane, I have renewable energy I want to bring to the Cayman Islands. Can you tell me who I can connect with? So it's really important that CRM growth and build out that I have a list that we can go to and say, you know what, here are the people who have shown interest and services for renewable energy. And here are the people you need to talk to if you want to bring renewable energy to the Cayman Islands, government entities, local entities, so that we can guide them in that direction. I've unmuted everyone's mic if you want to ask a question or you could certainly submit it through the chat. Um, so again, it's, it's up to anybody if you have any burning questions. My next one really is, in the past, how the Cayman Islands has handled high net worth individuals at the private airport, for example, um, have there been some challenges with how they're processed? So is that something that you think um, you'll be exploring more? Because there are people that come in with private jets and, you know, they, we hear different stories about how they're treated at that airport. And is your, is your new agency intending to kind of clean up and kind of give some process to those types of individuals who, who want to come here and invest? So again, um, well, working with those agencies are critical. Where Invest Cayman might not be, um, well, currently during COVID we can't, but we can certainly do meet and greet. We used to be able to. We can't right now due to uh, the quarantine restrictions. But there, that is certainly an area that, that can be improved and an area that we can maybe assist with sharing how it is happening in other countries and um, maybe even getting the funds if that is the, the problem. It could be staffing, it could be um, time for a new, a new building or a, an over, you know, a, a renovation, but yes. Anything that touches the investor, even including um, coming through the airport. Um, and we had this, as uh, you are aware, from um, the Department of Tourism. We have that Global Citizen Concierge Program, which has been quite successful. And of course, those are pretty much all individuals of which 80% flew in by private jet. And um, it's a, a great opportunity for us to be able to raise that level. And I don't think anybody in the process would not like to see that level raised. So we'll work with them. We'll try and uh, set some expectations, but even going through the airport, the airport was great working with fast tracking um, our global citizen concierge person. And I can see that there's a possibility to do that with our investors as well. So there are ways that we can handle it now 
but yes, it would be great if we um, had a, a specific service, if we know an investor is coming to the island through Invest Cayman um, and uh, that we can handle their arrival. I see past president Stuart Bostock has a question. Go ahead, Stuart. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks again, Jane. It's great to see the, um, uh, the organization um, coming together and the amount of, uh, I guess, change and development you've done over the last couple of months uh, since your creation. Um, could you just kind of cover uh, for us the previous administration's big move to create offices to promote financial services and inward investment in, um, I believe, Hong Kong, uh, Brussels, and Washington uh, to support, you know, as an additional to the, the office in London. Could you just maybe explain to us um, uh, what's happening with those offices and, and how your uh, new um, agency kind of, I guess, is a is a is a is a remake of that, or does it fit in to support those offices, or vice versa? It, it's actually vice versa. Um, so no, I cannot tell you what's happening with those offices because they have moved to a different ministry. Um, they were in the Ministry of Investment, Innovation, and Social Development, and were moved to a different ministry. So I'm not aware of the where they are in their process. Um, however, uh, one of the our key remits was to work with those offices because um, I, uh, because they're in strategic locations that have the ability to help with put on an event, uh, reach out to an investor that might be talking with us and, and interact personally. So that's great. And also um, to be able to share our information if they're attending other events. And actually, I'm working with Dr. Tasha Ebanks at the London office right now. And that's why I'm going back to London, because we are both co-host or uh, co-sponsoring um, a fairly um, high net worth individual event together. So it'll be sort of uh, the, the launch of Invest Cayman in London uh, to that, that clientele. And it's a great opportunity for us to work together. Um, they'll have our marketing materials, They'll, they'll have our banners so that even other events that we are not able to be at, they'll be able to be there and to talk about Invest Cayman and make that connection and then turn it over to our team to follow up. And it, once the other teams are internationally set in their locations, that is the plan to also interact with them on that way. I see Larissa has a question, um, as she put her she put her video on. So do you have a question, Larissa? Hi, good morning. No, actually, um, you guys have been answering most of my questions. So I'm actually quite pleased with this presentation. So thank you very okay. much. Hi, Jane. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Larissa. <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you. Anybody else have a, have a question for Jane about the presentation? Well, I guess I'll continue the discussion because I'm not going to let you off the hook, Jane. <laughs> a couple <laughs> more questions. Um, I guess, you know, Cayman really doesn't have a problem attracting investment, right? Uh, we've been one of the more successful uh, countries in, in the region. Financial investment. Right. But, but still, generally, um, in, you gave us a list of some of the areas that you think you're going to try to focus on. And... What do you think is the low hanging fruit for us right now? What do you think we will be able to attract more of at the early stages of your agency? I think uh, uh, renewable energies is gonna be hot. Um, it, as a small jurisdiction, meaning as small as in number of people and land mass, you know, that is an area that we could really um, have an opportunity to to lower costs and uh, to step up to the plate. Um, the uh, National Energy Plan, um, it, when that goes into, um, into play, I think that will then bring the Cayman Islands uh, to an area that we can now be competing with some of the other Caribbean countries because we've fallen a little bit behind in renewable energy and some of them have moved forward because they've put their energy plans into place. Um, we have a great energy plan. I think we came out with ours first uh, before other countries um, implemented theirs. 
So I think that's uh, the low hanging fruit for us. The other areas are cybersecurity and AI. Those don't require um, large facilities. And I think that if we brought those to the, to the island, that we could be the leaders in research and development in those areas. And we're already seeing a movement of cryptocurrency coming to, or digital assets um, coming to the island. So I think that's an area that we might be pushed to grow in because Wonderful. they're coming. Wonderful. I see Vice President Nelson Dilbert there. Nelson, do you want to ask Jane a question? Hi, Jane. Again, thank you again. Um, every time you give this presentation, it gets better and better. <laughs> so thank you again for all of that information. Um, I just had a question uh, as far as um, my industry is concerned in Cayman. Of course, you know, I've got the distillery here and we're looking to do more export and just wondering if and any other industries that are here and wanting to offer services abroad, what sort of avenues do you have? How would that look for an individual to get involved with your organization to fast track certain things and, and move things along um, with international trade or or like an example of what you think you could sort of help us with? Well, one of the things that- Or any um, companies I've, here. Sure, yeah. One of the things that I have been doing over the, the last few months is, is also creating um, other IPA relationships. And one of them is very interesting that I've been talking to, which is Invest India. And um, I was actually shocked after talking with them, uh, just to give you an idea, they. They started in, I think, uh, 2000 with three people. In 2015, had about 15, 20 people. And today, they have 350 people in their IPA. So, wow. <laughs> um, that gives you an idea. And they advised me that since 2000 to June of this year, that about $7 billion of investment has gone into India from the, Cayman, from the Cayman Islands, through the Cayman Islands. That's a lot of money. So I'm finding that with the relationships with each of the other IPAs that I'm connecting with, that there is this back and forth. There is this relationship where they are also looking for um, investors and they also have investors that want to go outwards. So it's a great partnership to connect with these kinds of in, um, other IPAs. And I think that's going to open the door for such as yourself, Dilbert, let's say there is a, a country that you are very interested in that you think you could export into. I can connect with that IPA and talk to them and go, what opportunities do you have? We have someone who's interested. And you can get that local investor that might want to bring you to, the, to their area because it's something new and exciting and it helps their country. Um, and that helps you with an investment. Um, and then, uh, or the reverse, they might like what you're doing and, and how you're doing it and invest in you. And it might not even be from um, that region that you'll export to, you might continue to export where you know your sales are best, but they want to be in on it and they'll, um, they'll want to support you and they'll invest in your company. So I see a lot of synergies there. And it's again, building that CRM and those relationships so that when you do come to us and say, this is what I'm looking for, we have those connections and we can connect you. Well, thank you, Jane. Um, we're coming up to an, an hour for the for the presentation. So I um, just want to ask anybody, do you have any further questions that you have for Jane? Um, you, again, you are allowed, all your mics are unmuted. So if you would like to ask a question, please, please come forward. Well, I do want to thank those who have said uh, that it was a, a useful presentation for them so far. So I appreciate that. No, it certainly has been. Um, and I'll and do again, a big plug, social media, it, click on everything, <laughs> like our Facebook. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's exciting to start up anything new and, and to be on the ground floor. And certainly from the chamber standpoint, we would, we're so delighted to be working with you. And, and just like you said, try to get 
our small business members and those businesses that are on the ground in Cayman uh, to benefit from the agency, right? Because we always exactly. want to try to promote Caymanians and business ownership and growing their businesses. Um, we always welcome inward investment, but it's always nice when Caymanians can directly benefit and grow wealth within their own country and, and, and start businesses and, and have those businesses grow. So and, um, I you think know what, again, Will, go ahead. It also, I found out too that there's actually a, an ask for local investors that are like, you know, Jane, we want to invest locally. So there's, there's also that. So it's not all necessarily foreign direct investment. We have local investors here. So please reach out to me. Tell me what you would like, what you're looking for, and we'll see if we can connect you. And I think, Will, that we should um, continue these kinds of talks so that we can come up with um, a nice way to hear from your members and what their needs are and then see how we can resolve that and how we can work with them. Well, absolutely. And, and the thing we can do is we could have regular chats via, via Zoom or presentations when you're ready to unveil your next, your strategy. Because okay. a lot of inward investment is all about the policy, right? Because the biggest frustrations, and I think we've had this conversation before, is for an investor to come into a country and be very unclear about the promises that were made and, right. and I think that's the big thing is managing those expectations that, you know, they can set up a business within a certain period of time. They're going to be helped in the navigation process and they're going to, it's going to be a comfortable transition for them. Um, otherwise, it becomes it becomes a bit um, difficult for them and, and they become disoriented. So, I, again, we're here to help and. We're delighted that you decided to join the chamber and work with us and engage with us for the future. So um, again, if there's no other questions, um, last call for questions. I, I believe everyone should be able to un un unmute their mic if you have any burning questions. Well, I would just like to say, Jane, again, thank you for your time. And thank you for the presentation and just simply say that uh, we look forward again to working with you in the future and best of luck for you and the team at Invest Cayman. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me.